Hello, today I'm going to show you how to make this oven mitt, which is a little bit uh, non-traditional. It doesn't have the thumb that comes out this way. Um, in this case, it's just three pieces and it's pretty much straightforward sewing. You don't have to worry about that little crook that is in um, that thumb with potential uh, seam rippage at that point when you clip it. Um, so I have a free pattern for you. The link um, is below in the description. It will take you to my free stuff page. Scroll through to find the oven mitt uh, pattern, which you can click and download. So you're going to need about a third yard, and I say a third yard because the height of the longest pattern piece is about 11 inches, and 12 inches is a third of a yard. Um, however, um, understand that that's the length of the fabric that you're going to need. So if you do buy a third yard or 12 inches, uh, you should be able to get two oven mitts out of that fabric. However, uh, that's just for uh, the self fabric. You also need the same amount of lining fabric. Um, that's the fabric that is going on the inside here. Um, and between that is the batting that you're going to need. Um, let's just talk about batting for a minute. Um, I'm going to be using the wrap and zap, which is 100% natural cotton batting. Um, I prefer this just because I really prefer natural fibers um, when I'm working with anything that has to do with uh, any kind of cooking. There are other types of batting you can purchase. There's one um, that I have here, it's called Thermalam. You can see it has a lot of batting. Um, it is quite soft. Um, I just feel like sometimes this can be a little bit too stiff for these types of uh, uh, garments or oven mitts, not really garments. The other one here is what they um, call Insul Fuse and it has aluminum on the inside which has been um, punched with some polyester uh, type fibers. Um, understand that this uh, cannot accidentally get um, thrown into the microwave. It, sometimes that happens um, because it has the aluminum in it. So the oven mitt, its finished dimensions is approximately five and a half inches wide and about 10 inches uh, tall, uh, which is actually, for my hand, it works out pretty good. Um, so if you need to make it any longer, you can just add length to the bottom here. But also understand that if you do add length to the pattern, you will uh, need to purchase more fabric. So let's talk about the uh, pattern for just a minute. I have the title page and then I have this warning page. Um, when you print out this pattern, you need to print it out in actual size. When your print monitor pops up, it will give you uh, several different um, options. Some say fit to page. Um, these patterns are, I set them up to actually print perfectly on an eight and a half by 11, that's American, and also for any kind of European or non-American size of A4. So uh, make sure that you select actual size when printing the pattern. The title page and this page do not need to be printed. Then I'm gonna move on to the actual pattern and I'll show you <clears throat> how I've set this up. There are three pattern pieces um, that you're going to need to cut and then tape together. Pages one and two go together. Pages three and four go together. And pages five and six go together. And I'm going to just cut one really quickly um, to show you how you need to tape these together. So in this instance, I'm just going to cut page one and I'm gonna cut along this dotted line here. And then what I can do is I can just match up on that dotted line approximately matching your edge lines and then simply tape it together. Oops. And I always make sure that uh, when I'm taping these patterns together like this that I put tape going across here on these parts that I'm going to cut. And now of course I can just cut around the perimeter. Um, of each pattern. And you will need to uh, tape the three, uh, I guess, oval shapes 
together. And then on page six, I just want to point out that I have a separate pattern piece and that's for the uh, hanger loop that I have here. All right. Set those aside. Now I have some pattern pieces here that I have pre-cut. I can grab these. I have the bottom mitt, which is here, this shorter piece. I have the top mitt, which is the longer piece. And then I have what I call the mouth of the piece, which I've chosen to do in a contrast fabric. Let's talk about that for just a minute. I've set up my patterns to cut everything out of self fabric, and that's how I have um, accounted for the amount of fabric that you need. Again, the longest piece here is the top mitt, which is approximately 11 inches long. So if you're going to do what I've done, um, understand you might be able to get more than two of your self fabrics out but also understand that you're gonna need the same amount of fabric for the lining and for the batting. I've chosen to use a contrast fabric for the oven mitt and for my hanger uh, loop. So on the pattern piece, you will have noticed, let me just grab a pattern piece really quickly. There are a series of these T marks, which are called notches. Those are gonna be, become very important in your sewing. I have here, I've already notched these out um, using a pattern notcher. You're gonna need to know, need these notches to actually line everything up. This is the bottom of a mitt, and then I'm gonna actually place here with the double notches for my oven mitt mouth. Line up the top. Understand that this mouthpiece, I have other notches here on either of the sides. That is not the center of this piece, because this, the under mitt and the top mitt are two different lengths. So these notches will be off center slightly from where you're gonna be stitching. These two here on the side are gonna be very important. So be sure that when you're cutting out your fabric that you actually mark or clip your notches so that uh, you, you will understand how to sew things together. Now I'm actually gonna use these and I'm gonna actually cut out um, which I don't normally do, cut out the fabric, but I want to show you um, how I'm going to do that. And I will be right back. Okay, so I am back, and I have actually pre-quilted fabric. Um, and I just want to show you the pattern pieces again. Um, you're going to need, again, uh, each one of these cut in self fabric, each one of these cut in a lining fabric, and each one of these cut in a batting fabric. Um, now, if you're going to quilt it, you don't have to quilt it, um, but I have pre-quilted this um, with all three layers of the fabric together before I've actually cut the actual pattern pieces out. And a lot of times that's a lot easier. And what I've done is I've actually taken the pieces that I wanna cut out of the fabric, I've laid them on the fabric, and then I've cut the rectangle of fabric on all three pieces and then I have quilted it, and now I'm going to lay my pattern pieces on this and cut this, um, cut the pieces out of the quilted fabric. And how I'm going to do that is some people will, um, obviously, you can use pins, but sometimes when I have quilted fabric, I feel like it's, there's too much loft here and either the pins rip the paper um, or I get um, a bad cut. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to use my pins because I forgot my weights. Um, just to lay this down um, on the fabric. And I'm gonna use my tailor's chalk and just kind of mark around here. And I'm actually using a wax chalk, which um, I just happen to have a box of it. Um, when I'm working with apparel, I don't use a wax chalk. I use a um, powder chalk. Um, sometimes the wax chalk, once you iron it, it will leave, leave a mark, because the wax will actually melt into the fibers. But since this is on the seam, it's not showing on the outside, it's, I feel like it's okay. So after that, I'm gonna come in here, I'm gonna mark here all of my notches. Okay. And then here, I'm actually lining my next pattern piece to save fabric right on this same line here that I've had 
on on for my under mitt. Okay? And then I will hold that down. Mark around my top oven mitt. Um, I should say, uh, if you didn't see it on the title page of this project, that um, I'm giving half inch seam allowances all the way around. Let me make sure that I can see those marks pretty clearly. Okay, so this, those are my top. Um, I'll cut those out in just a second. I want you to see me mark my mouth. I've done the same thing. I've quilted all of the fabric. I'm going to center this for the length. And then I will just kind of chalk around this. It's much easier to see on the black fabric. Now these are actually, um, I think you'll find this is gonna be actually pretty easy fast sew. So if you're looking to use some fabric, maybe you've already got quilted fabric um, that you wanna use up for some easy Christmas um, gifts, um, this is a, you could probably whip up like three or four of these in a um, just a couple of hours. Okay, so there I've got my marks and now I can cut and all I have to do is quickly cut all of these pieces. Okay, I'm gonna cut this one out um, without speeding anything up. Actually, I think I'll probably cut the other pieces off camera so you don't have to watch me cut the pieces out. I'm sure you're a pretty good cutter and you don't need to watch me do this. The one thing I do want to show you is that after I've cut everything out, I'm coming back and I'm gonna make my little clips into where my notches are. And again, you have half inch seam allowances, so don't clip larger than quarter inch clips here because you need it to hold onto the seam. All right, I'm gonna cut the other pieces out. I'll be right back. Okay, so I'm back. Um, and in my haste to get the uh, tutorial going, I forgot to remind you to cut out um, your fabric piece for the uh, hanger loop um, here um, on the mitt. So we're gonna cut that out and then we're gonna press it where I'm actually gonna start with this piece. Um, I'm gonna get my pressing board here. And my I've covered my pressing board with uh, black fabric. It's easier to see the lighter colors that way um, unless you're working with black fabric. So I'm gonna use a piece of muslin here so that you can see what I'm talking about, see how I'm working. So I'm gonna start with um, this piece. And what I'm gonna do is I'm actually just going to fold this in half first, give it a quick press. That will give me my crease line down the center. And then what I will do is I'll open that up. I will fold one of the raw edges to that crease line, give it another quick press. And then I'm gonna fold the other raw edge to the raw edge of the previous edge. And you could finger press that. The idea is that we're gonna fold it over one more time to make that loop, which I've done here. And I'm gonna give it a final press on top here. And then all we need to do is we'll need to stitch it together right here on the edge of the folded areas. So before we go over to the machine, I'm actually gonna prepare um, the first part of my oven mitt. And I'm gonna start with the bottom oven mitt. Um, so I'll need both the bottom mitt and my mouth um, pieces. And I know that it's the bottom mitt because I have double notches here. And I'm gonna match the double notches to the double notches here. And then I'll match my side notches on top of each other. And once I've got that, everything matched up here. I'm actually just gonna pin, and I know that this has a lot of thickness to it, so you may not be able to get your, uh, the pins probably won't stay very well, but we're just gonna pin this here just so we, so we keep these pieces together. Now with the loft or the thickness of these pieces, they probably won't move around on you. They're pretty easy um, to manage and the pieces aren't um, too unusual of a shape. 
um, but I just like to keep them together before we get to the machine. So now I'm ready um, to sew um, my bottom mitt. I'm just gonna sew around between the side notches and then I'm also going to sew, prepare um, my hanger loop um, for sewing. Okay, so I'm here at the uh, sewing machine. I've got a straight stitch set up and I'm actually sewing this with a slightly longer stitch since this isn't um, terribly fine sewing. I can um, do a longer stitch for everything um, and when we get to the actual mitt, you'll actually need a longer stitch. So again, I folded my loop here in half and then in half again and I'm actually just going to stitch here right on the edge. That all lined up my machine and I'm not going to bother back stitching because these ends are actually going to be inside of the oven mitt seam okay that came out really nice so now I can move on to the actual sewing of the mitt and remember that I had these side notches where, I, and then I have pinned up here at the top and then I've had the other side notch. Whoops, there you go. We can see it now. So these two side notches. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to stitch around the curve, all the way around from notch to notch. But I'm going to back stitch at the beginning. Now I have half inch, so I'm lining it up to where my half inch is in the machine. Grab my pin where my half inch mark on the machine is, matching the needle with the notch here. Put my needle down. And I'm sewing with a longer stitch. On my machine, I'm putting it three and a half. If you have a four, you can stitch it at a four as well. Um, usually when you're working with thicker thicknesses, you want a longer stitch, um, just because the smaller stitches will tend to um, put holes in the fabric. So now I'm actually going to backstitch here at this point. So I'm gonna sew a little bit. I will backstitch up to my notch and then backstitch over. And then I can be on my way sewing my half inch seam all the way around as I go. I'm gonna grab this pin. And as I come up to my other notch, this is my ending point. I'm also going to take this pin out. I'm going to come up here. I'm going to go kind of slow because I want to actually backstitch at this notch as well. So I'm going to get ready as I come up to the notch and backstitch. That looks good. And I'll take it out. And so there I'm finished with my first sew of my oven mitt. And you can see it on the other side as well. So now we're going to go back over to the pressing mat um, to sew the other piece. Okay, so we're back at the pressing mat and I've got my bottom mitt all sewn to the mouth of the mitt. Okay, we can see it like this. Um, and now I actually need to attach the top mitt to the top mouth. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to flip this back so you can see it and then I'll flip this around. If I lay these two like this, make sure that you've pulled the uh, extra fabric back from the mouthpiece. And then I'm just gonna flip this over and I'm gonna match my top notches here. And also be aware of my side notches here that everything is going to match there as well. So I'm just first going to match the top here really quick. Put a quick pin there. And then make sure all of my fabric here on this side is pulled back by matching that side notch. The same goes here on this side, that's pulled back and I can match my notches there. All right, and now what's going to happen is I'm gonna to go to the machine. I'm gonna start here where I, where I ended uh, my stitching to the bottom uh, I'll backstitch here and then I'm going to sew all the way around and I'm going to end here where I ended my stitching on the bottom mitt. So what it's going to look like is you have a full circle of stitching, but you're actually going to stop here, start here, I'm sorry, and then stop here. 
So let's go sew this together. So I'm at the machine, and as I've said before, um, if you can see this, I'm gonna start right here where I left off sewing. Understand you have a full like mouthpiece here at the bottom here, but we're only sewing through the two layers here. So we're gonna start right where we left off, we'll backstitch, and then we'll sew all the way around. I'm gonna remove this after I get it into my machine. Let's be kind of snug, so if you can actually lift a little bit further on your presser foot, just to lift the, put the foot up a little bit more, some most machines have that available to them. So I'm gonna actually going to line up my needle where I left off the stitching before. I'm gonna grab my pin here. I don't want to sew over that pin. And make sure you're also, it should be lined up to your half inch um, line on your machine. I'll stick my needle down, make sure my presser foot is down, and I'm going to sew. So I'm going to sew a little bit, and then I'm going to back stitch back to that beginning spot. You want that uh, those uh, beginning and beginnings and ends to be really secure. And now I can simply sew around. Grab my pin here. Now, just one note about coming back to your original start. Um, maybe um, some of your stitching, if your stitching got out of alignment, make sure that you wanna line that stitching line up to your original stitch line here, because you wanna end there. That's kind of the idea. And grab my pin, remove my pin here. I'm gonna line, eye line where I left off my stitching here, if you can see that right up to where my needle is, so my needle is actually in that um, alignment. And I'm gonna sew up, I'm gonna go kind of slow because as I'm gonna have to be able to see here where my stitching was through my uh, presser foot, if you can see that, hopefully you have a presser foot that is clear, you can see it. I'm gonna go up and I'm going to back stitch there so everything holds together. Now, uh, and you can see here, I've ended where I began. And if we turn this all the way around, right there I have a good beginning and end there, and it continues all the way around. Um, now, if you don't have a presser foot to where you can see through to see your beginnings and ends, what you could do is start at the top here and sew all the way down and then actually do the same thing by flipping it over and marking exactly where you need to stop um, at the top and then sewing all the way down again. So I'm not actually gonna go back over to the pressing table at this point because I can actually finish this here. You'll, um, you'll notice that we have this flap now. Uh, that's our mouth. If I pull that up, then we'll, you'll notice that now we have the sides that need to be sewn. No, I'm gonna have to go back and stop this. Okay, so I'm back here at my pressing mat and I actually had a thought at the sewing machine that I was actually going to go ahead and just finish this by sewing now these two side seams here on one either, either side. Um, but then that would leave the hem. And for those uh, people that maybe not uh, may not be as experienced. Um, sewing the hem in this small circle can be kind of challenging. So I thought, um, why not separate um, just one more step? Of course, if you're more experienced, you can sew the sides down. Um, just skip this part, go to the sides, you'll understand um, what I'm talking about. So to do that, to actually hem this bottom part, I'm actually going to turn over here at my notches. And I'll go ahead and pin this down. You could try pressing it, but um, with the thicknesses, pressing may not um, be as effective as it were if it were only about you know a layer or two. So I'm just gonna pin my half inch hem allowance. Now, I know a lot of people are probably thinking, why aren't you finishing the edges? Why aren't you running this through an overlock? Um, that's because, well, one, a lot of people may not have an overlock. 
Um, this is an oven mitt, so it's probably not going to get washed a lot, hopefully not a lot. Um, but I'm actually just gonna zigzag over this um, raw edge here on both of the sides, and that should cover any of the raw edges from fraying out. Once I get finished with doing the sides of this, I'll come back here and pin those for you. Um, or actually, I'm actually gonna run a zigzag stitch all the way around. I really hesitate putting this thickness in an overlock machine. Um, not that it probably couldn't handle it, but sometimes if you have a lot of thicknesses, sometimes that knife can actually get stuck if your knife isn't um, sharp enough. And then you have to cut everything out and probably take your machine in to get adjusted or to have a new knife put on. So I kind of avoid putting this kind of thickness into an overlock machine. So now that I've got this pinned up, I'm gonna take it over the machine. I'm gonna zigzag this across to keep that hem. All right, I'm here at the machine. I have set my machine up with a zigzag stitch, a very wide zigzag stitch and a very long one. Um, I've actually set my stitch to the widest it can, it can go, and the length that I've set is about four. Your machine stitch length may be a little bit different than mine, um, but I've set it for a fairly uh, long stitch. In any case, I'm gonna make sure that the needle comes right here, right along the edge of that hem to cover this uh, raw edge here. So. I'm gonna set my fabric underneath the presser foot, remove this pin, pin, and I'm gonna backstitch at the beginning and at the end. So here I've got that zigzag. Now I backstitched because I don't want those stitches to come out because the zigzags are pretty long stitches. I'm not sure if you can see that. And uh, even though that this is gonna be sewn together, I just wanna make sure that those stitches won't pull out. So I'm just gonna quickly do the opposite side. Make sure you're passing that stitch here, at least uh, getting this raw edge in the middle of those zigzag stitches, and you shouldn't have a problem. Now, of course, you could, if you feel more comfortable overlocking this before you zigzag, that's fine. If you don't like the zigzag stitch, you can overlock, and then, of course, straight stitch it. For those of you who are more advanced, you could sew the side seams together first, as I'm about to do, um, and then roll this over and hem it that way if you prefer. So I'm actually gonna stay here at the machine. I'm gonna turn this around, and here I need to sew these little side seams together, and I like to start on this edge. Um, and I'm actually gonna start from here and sew down. And um, remember, the hanger, uh, the hanger loop, I'm actually gonna insert that in as I'm sewing this first one. Um, so I'm gonna get this here. Actually, I'm gonna first change my stitch back to a straight stitch. And I'm gonna get this underneath my presser foot here. And here, I'm going to start where that stitch line ended. I'm actually gonna back stitch needle down and I'm gonna back stitch I'm gonna stitch and then I'm gonna back stitch just to make sure that that is a stable stitched area so remember you're at half inch seam allowance and just as I become come down to just before this hem I'm gonna grab my hanger loop and I'm gonna fold it in half and I like to put this just above where the hem amount is, just so I don't add any more bulk to it. So it's just above that hem edge, and I will sew, and then I'll make sure that I'm going to backstitch over the edge. Okay, and now if you look at the inside, we've got our hanger loop. Now I'm going to turn this over and do the opposite side again. I'm going to start here, this under my presser foot. 
right where that ended is where I'm going to start. And I'm going to sew and backstitch over it. Again, I want to come down here, I'm going to backstitch over this edge. And here I'm done, I've got some long threads. I'm just going to clip these out. Now, again, I'm also going to stay here for the next step, which is to zigzag all over, all around the edges here. But I'm going to start with the rounded edges first. And I'm going to start where we straight stitch. So I'm going to zigzag from here all the way around and stop. Then I'm going to start over again on the other, the shorter rounded side, zigzag around this edge so they're separate like there's a little hinge here. And then I'll come back and I'll zigzag from here straight down. And that's just to keep everything together. Again, if you want to try doing this in your overlock or surgery, you can do that, but that is, um, that is up to you as long as you understand you may get all of your fabric stuck in your overlock at, the, um, at where the knife is. So I'm setting my machine up with a, a long, and wide zigzag stitch. We'll just take a second. Okay, so I've got my machine set to a long and wide zigzag stitch. I'm actually make sure my presser foot is down. And I'm go, I'll probably back stitch just one or two, just the beginning and the end. And I'm going around the curved areas first, passing the needle just on the other side here at the edge. And of course, depending on uh, your fabrics, if they're really prone to unraveling or not, you don't have to do this. Um, but I think it's just generally a good idea just to make sure your edges are clean. So I've got the one of the sides all zigzag. Now I'm going to turn this over. I'm going to do the other rounded side. got a little out of control there with the zigzagging. Okay, so now this side is all zigzag. That's not gonna come out. Now I'm going to go to the straight edges and folding the rounded edges together, mixing, making that nice little hinge. And I'm gonna zigzag here all the way down and I'm gonna do that on both sides. One side done, here's the other side. Okay, so now I have everything zigzagged. There is one more thing that I like to do, and I'm gonna switch my machine back to a straight stitch. Now you don't have to do this, but I kind of like to do this. It keeps the seam out of the way. I'm gonna come in here, I'm gonna press, pu push this seam toward the short end of the, the, I'm, the short um, and the bottom of the mitt. I'm gonna press that in toward like this. And then I'm actually going to do a top stitch here. You could actually do it on this side if you would like, but I, I like to sew on the inside, outside here, so I need to know what it looks like. But instead of going in this way, I'm going to turn this around, hold that down, and I'm gonna slip this under the foot. Come in here, grab this. And I'm gonna sew to this spot. So I'm probably about three quarters of an inch or a half inch away from the edge. Put the presser foot down. And I'm going to sew and back stitch. This 
out of there. And what that does, the, the stitching isn't that straight because I only was using one hand. Um, I'm going to tack this down. What that does is it holds the seam from getting away from you. And I'm going to do it to the opposite side as well. Again, I'm going to turn this toward the shorter end of the mitt on this side and push this in here. Oops, you can't see that. My hand is in the way. I know I'm doing a lot of stitching on this, but these little fast end um, steps, if you're actually planning on making these and sewing, selling them at craft fairs, these little finishing steps are really what make the um, pieces really stand out. Okay, and I'm going to stitch this. Okay, and that holds on. And little steps like this also help on when you're uh, making garments as well. You can do that. Um, okay, so I'm gonna let's meet back over at the pressing table. Okay, we're back at the pressing table, and we're about done. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna clip all of my threads. This looks nice on the inside. And in the moment of truth, I'm going to actually turn this right side out. Pretty durable. And what you want to do is get your hands in here, really press out these seams. Get nice and rounded in there. I wouldn't really advise clipping the curves in there because that will weaken the seam. And with thick fabric like this, it's more prone to uh, rip out and open that seam if you do that. So just push that out. And now here is your finished oven mitt. It's kind of like a puppet. If you have kids, you might put some googly eyes here on the top and make it kind of fun. Um, but this is a very simple way to do an oven mitt. And now I have two. And of course, you don't have to have a contrast color on the inside. You can make it all the same color. Have fun creating. Again, you can get the uh, pattern down below in the description, which takes you to my free stuff page on my site, sewitlikeaman.com. Thank you for watching and stay, stay tuned for many other tutorials.